In my last video, I explored the fundamentals of geometry node theory and how I came to stop worrying and love fields. In this video, we're going to take a look at the practical side of the Noodleverse, from the powerful shortcuts of node manipulation to a rigorous round of what does that button do? Even if you think you know all of this, you should still watch because how great are you going to feel if it turns out that you actually do? So first, I'm going to select the cube before opening the Geometry Node Editor. Here, I'm going to add a Geometry Node modifier to the cube by creating a new Geometry Node tree. But I'm not going to use this one, I'm going to use these. Five node trees that I've made specifically to take you step by step through the functions of this editor. If you want to train with them as part of your daily workout, this file is available for free members of my Patreon. But if you're one of those people that learns best by just sitting there and watching someone else do it, put your feet up, because we're starting with level one. The first thing I'm going to do is use the left mouse button to scroll across the node tree to get to the second thing that I'm going to do, which is zoom. This can be done by either scrolling the mouse wheel, using the plus and minus keys on the numpad, or holding control and the middle mouse button while dragging the mouse. Throughout this video, this thing will display the buttons and keys that I'm pressing. I'm on a Mac, but it will show Windows and Linux shortcuts because I know my audience. For those of us with Macs, however, the keys are all but identical. You just use the Option button for Alt, the Command button for Control, and it's $22 for a blob of avocado on a slice of sourdough toast. Anyway, we're in the Node Editor, so we're going to need some nodes to edit. The simplest way to add one is to use the Add menu up here in the header. Navigate to the node you want and click it. Or you can make the menu appear at your cursor with Shift A. But if you don't have the time to sift through the menu, you can type what you're looking for after you press Shift A and it will initiate a search. If you right-click in the Geometry Node Editor, it brings up this mini-menu, which I first learnt to do about three minutes ago. You can also add a node by pulling a noodle out of a socket, like pulling an elastic band out of a dog. Then click where you want it and search for what you want it to be. To move a node, you can use the left mouse button or G, then the left mouse button. If you do this whilst pressing either X or Y, it constrains the node's movement to that axis. You'll have to get used to using the left mouse button as it's also used for basic selection in all the ways that you'd expect. For single selection, with shift for multiple selection, and clicking and dragging for panic buying selection. There's also Lasso Selection, which can be activated with the left mouse button whilst holding Ctrl and Alt. This method of selection was such a word-of-mouth hit that it's soon to return for a fourth season. A selects all. If we no longer want what we've selected, Alt-A deselects all. And if we want to select everything but what we've selected, Ctrl-I inverts the selection. The technical term for this is a divorce. We can disconnect a noodle going into a node by picking the end up with the left mouse button. But if we do the same with the noodle coming out of a node, Blender thinks, oh no, they're trying to pull that elastic band out again. So to disconnect the noodle, we have to press Control when we click the left mouse button. We can disconnect a node between nodes, but leave the others still connected by holding Alt when we click on it. In the same situation, X will delete the node and the connection between the other two. If we want to delete the node but keep the connection, we can use Ctrl and X. To cut nodes, you have to imagine that you're a cat and that the mouse in your hand is being held by that cat. Now, pressing Ctrl with the right mouse button, move the pointer like that cat would. 
The same technique is used to add reroutes, but holding shift with the right mouse button instead. Imagining you're a cat is not necessary for this maneuver. And that is the end of level one. Welcome to level two. Copy, paste and cut work in the geometry node editor in the same way that they've always worked since the Romans first used them to conquer Europe. Shift and D duplicates, which is basically copy and paste, if copy and paste was just one word and you had to press less keys. Be careful though, because the new node is created directly on top of the old one, and its perfectly disguised presence can lead you to question your own sanity. Control shift d duplicates a node and also its links to others. We can mute selected nodes with M, which is a very good way of seeing what they contribute to the group. When muting a node with multiple inputs, the X-ray image of a noodle appears. This isn't an anatomically accurate representation of the inside of a node, but it shows us which input is passing through unchanged. Muting links, or noodles, allows us to dispossess entire branches of the node tree at once. Node trees can get messy, but if we're absolutely sure that we'll remember what a node is doing, we can hide it, either with the toggle on the top or by pressing H. And if we're not 100% sure we'll remember, we can just hide the unused sockets with Control h if we want to stay really organized, Control j puts selected nodes into a frame, where they are now bound together as a consensual unit. But if a node wants to leave the frame, say this one realizes that they actually see this one more as a friend, Alt-P unparents it. Finally for this level, two ways to control our view. Pressing the Home button zooms us out so we can see everything in the node tree while if we have nodes selected, the dot on your numpad zooms the view to frame them. If you ever find yourself screen capturing nodes for use in intricately animated YouTube tutorials, you could use this method to maintain a constant zoom scale. Anyway, that's the end of level two. The Geometry Node Editor's interface can be broken down into three parts. The header, the sidebar, and the toolbar. The sidebar can be a bit overwhelming, so I'm going to revisit it casually throughout this level to make it feel more friendly. For example, the Node tab shows you the specific properties of the node that's currently selected. Here, you can see where I've set this frame's label, label size, and cute color. In the toolbar, you can choose your selection mode. You can also toggle through these with W, or use the Shift Space Toolbar shortcut to switch between them. This is a button for the Lynx Cut tool, which, since I've learned to be a cat, I haven't used, and the Annotate tools live here too. With these, you can draw on your node trees, or just write small, subtle messages in the hope that someday someone might read them. When a toolbar tool is selected, you can find options for it in the Sidebars tool tab. With the Annotate Eraser, for example, this is where you can change its size. Now look up. It's header time. At the far right of the Geometry Node Editor, you'll find your overlay options. First, there's the option to turn off all the wire or noodle colors, which is great for those of us who love making life harder for ourselves. Reroute Auto Labels is not only the name of a German synth-pop group, but a feature that automatically labels unlabeled reroutes if they come after a labeled one. The context path is this slug along here. Control g puts selected nodes into a group, and the context path helps us always know where we are. In the Group tab of the sidebar are the properties of the group you're currently in, we can enter and exit groups by pressing Tab. This can be disorientating at the best of times, so this is where the context path shines, always letting you know where you're at. 
And this button is the parent button. If you're down a group rabbit hole, it takes you to the parent group of the one you're in. If you do turn the context path overlay off, good luck. This toggles your annotations. And timings displays the amount of time a node took to execute, as calculated when it was last evaluated. Frames display the total time for all of their nodes. And the group output displays the total time for the entire node group. And the last overlay shows you if any named attributes are being used by a node or node group. You can almost always get all of the names this way. But if you don't, you can pressurize the ones you do get into giving up the rest. The header also has the geometry nodes type, which is where you set your node tree as either a modifier or a tool. The menus for those times when you just need the GUI. The geometry node tree, where you can remove, duplicate, or give a tree a fake user. This prevents it from being deleted when you save your file if it isn't assigned to any geometry. The pin keeps the focus on the current tree, even if you select other geometry. Next to the pin is the snap button, which toggles snapping when moving nodes. This is a must if you, like me, organize your sock drawer by genre. Next to the snap button are the snap node element options, which can also be accessed with shift, control and tab. I've only ever used the grid option, but I'm sure if I put enough time in, I'd be able to work out how to use the others. Back at the sidebar one last time, I may have said that it was daunting, but it is, in fact, your best friend, because there are many nodes with functions that can only be accessed through it. Well done, everyone. We survived it. And by it, I mean level three. Scaling nodes doesn't scale the nodes themselves, but instead their relationship to each other. If I press S, then Y to constrain the scale to the Y axis as I drag my mouse, then press 0, I can align selected nodes or reroutes by scaling them to 0 on the Y axis. This technique also works with rotating the relationship between nodes, using R to rotate, then typing the desired angle. Speaking of relationships, if we want to add a node between two others that are close to each other, Auto Offset will move either the left node or the right node out of the way to make room. Afterwards, Undo first undoes the shift, then the actual connecting of the node. You can toggle the direction of this movement with T. Auto Offset can be disabled in your preferences. To swap noodles of a similar type, hold Alt while disconnecting one. And if you select multiple nodes, you can press F to connect their open sockets. If you keep hitting F, it'll keep connecting open sockets until all possible open socket connections have been made. Shift F works in exactly the same way as F, except it replaces existing connections. If I select these two, I can keep pressing F until all possible connections are made. But pressing F won't connect these two because the geometry socket on the right is already being used. Shift F will connect the two because it really just doesn't care. Shift Alt with the left mouse button connects the selected node's output to the group output. While Shift Control and the left mouse button connects it to the viewer. And that's the end of level four which means there's only one thing left to do. Level five. There isn't anything that we've covered so far that involves an add-on, but a video on node manipulation wouldn't be complete without a section on the Node Wrangler. It comes with Blender, you just have to activate it, which is easily done in your preferences. This powerful cowboy has a huge herd of features, and it's packed with more possibilities than a pregnant prairie dog. But I'm tired, so forgive me if I just focus on the ones that I actually use. The Node Wrangler menu, which you can access with Shift-W, shows you all of its sweet, sweet moves. 
One of them is called Lazy Connect. It connects the matching sockets of nodes if you press Alt and drag the right mouse button across them. If you also press Shift, pop-ups appear asking you which socket you want to connect with which. Look, I don't know why you call yourself lazy, but you have to believe in you, you know. Lazy Mix may sound like a wrapper, but it works in a similar way, connecting outputs with the appropriate type of node. Here, it's joined two geometry outputs with a Join Geometry node. Delete Unused Nodes cleans up your node tree, deleting all nodes that don't contribute to the final result. Seeing as none of these nodes contribute to anything, I'm not going to press OK. Alt-S swaps links, in the same way that we did earlier, but without having to touch them. You should try this. It helps. And then there's Add Reroutes to Outputs, which you can do with the slash key. This brings up a little window where you can choose which kind of output gets a reroute. All outputs, linked to outputs, or loose outputs. And that's the end of Level 5. And it's also the end of this video. A big, big thank you to my patrons on Patreon. If you want to know how insufferable I am when I'm making these videos, going on and on and on, then come say hi. And the Blender file that I use to make this video will be there too for free. So, you know, come and get that and have a look around and maybe, I don't know. I'm an Englishman who finds self-promotion just the most uncomfortable thing imaginable. So I'm just going to keep talking until this 